going to start with the Premier League, Mo, and the Premier League title race. And it is a humdinger. Uh, In case you've been living under a rock for the last few weeks, Liverpool, Manchester City are prepared to go toe-to-toe between now and the end of the season. So as it stands, looking at the table, Mo, Manchester City, as we know, one point advantage, 77 points from 32 played. Liverpool in second, 76 from 32 played. It looks pretty simple. If Manchester City hold on, no slips, no bumps in the road, they retain the title. Any little back door left open, and Liverpool are in. How does this play out? I mean, I think City win. It, it sounds dumb because, but I just think they have the point lead. They've they are the best team in the world and have been for three of the last four years. Uh, they play the best football, you know. And then and they, they've got the lead. They need to win what seven games? Win win all your games. You win your title. I mean, and what more motivation do you need? Right? It's as simple as that for them. They've they've got no. They've got they've got some tricky games, Newcastle possibly, you know, but they've got no massive like oh my goodness games and no no colossal games, and they've got none of their traditional banana skin games. So not playing Southampton, not playing uh, Crystal Palace. So you know the traditional banana skins where you think oh they're going to slip up there. None of those games, none of the really difficult games, big games, no big team opponents. You know, they, they, they clobbered City twice when they played them this year. They clobbered Liverpool twice when they played them this year. Inexplicably, didn't beat Liverpool either time this year. But we'll get on to more of that later. But they're great. They're fantastic. They've, they've, they've got 75 goals this season. Not one player has scored more than 11 times. Riyad Mahrez has 11 goals. De Bruyne has 11 goals. That's ridiculous. They spread the goals around the whole team. There's no striker in the team, just like there wasn't last year. I mean, last year, at least they had Aguero. But like this season, they've not, they've not even had Aguero. They've just gone in. Jesus has barely played, right? You know, they've been playing false nines all season. And when we say false nines, we mean literally, like, there's no Lionel Messi. It's not a Lionel Messi level false nine. This is like a, just a standard false nine. You know, like everyone mocks Firmino for scoring, like, what was it, five, five, six goals or whatever it was when Liverpool won the title. City are going to, you know, the same sort of thing. City don't even have a Salah or a Mane to, to score bag loads of goals. They just get it done. They, they Defensively, they're incredible, right? For a team, they're, they're, non, they're non-penalty expected goals conceded. Right, which is the amount of goals expected to concede from shots that aren't penalties, is twenty point fourteen. That's a league best. You know, they are they're non penalty expected goals on target conceded, which is like the quality of the shots they're facing. Right, so how many goals expected to how many goals expected to concede from shots that are on target? So really, the quality shots twenty point nine eight. They're the lowest in the division or the best highest. I mean, hope you want to rate that. They're incredible. I mean, remember, this is not a team that sits there in a low block like Atletico Madrid or like Chelsea do sometimes, or even Liverpool do sometimes, although very rarely, really. They're a highline team these days. City play highline football, very highline football, and they do so, you know, with whoever's in the back line. Like they've had Ruben Diaz, who's been out recently, right? Their best defender. They're still played on the halfway line with John Stones and Nathan Ake and Amerit Laporte. These guys who, you know, Kyle Walker's been injured. They're safety buffs. They're still carried on playing on the halfway line. They're not afraid of anything. They're sensational. Liverpool are really good. Liverpool are really, 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 really good. <laughs> They're amazing side. But is this it, it, is this how the season sorry? No, no, go on. I was just going to say, is this how the season ends? So six games left each. Manchester City win it by a point. Does it end 95 to 94? They both win all of their games and it stays as it is. So Liverpool will go punch for punch with them. I, I, you know, I don't know because Liverpool actually have a very tricky couple of fixtures in there. Villa is not easy because everyone expects Villa to be easy because it's Steven Gerrard. But Steven Gerrard is a man of immense pride and character and he's going to because he does, everyone thinks he's going to, he's just going to roll over and die. He's going to send Liverpool out to play at Villa to play even harder. Do you know what I mean? So that could be a tricky one. Um, Everton is a gimme. Man United. The thing is, Man United Everton, as, as Gary Neville said on, on before on, on TV, those two should have been the hardest two games left in the running for for, City, for Liverpool. But because both teams are sorry state, I mean United was a gimme. We saw that Everton will probably be a gimme as well. But Spurs, they've got they've got to play Spurs. And Conte drew with them last time they played, you know. So uh, Conte's good. Kane, Son, uh, Kulisevsky playing really well. Spurs don't have any other cup competitions to worry about. Spurs could just spend all the time prepping for that game. So they've got some very difficult fixtures, uh, Liverpool. 
whereas City don't have anything like that. So it's possible they go punch for punch because Liverpool are, again, as I said about, what was it, 10 Reedy's good. You know, they're fantastic. But they also, there's chances they might slip up. There's clear chances they might slip up. Whereas if City somehow slip up, it's going to be out of the blue. No one's going to see it coming against those teams that they're playing, right? Do you know what I mean? Uh, the only the only saving grace I can have for Liverpool fans is if it comes down to the last two game weeks and Liverpool have the lead, they've won the Premier League. Because the last two games, I mean, Southampton and Wolves, and they beat those guys constantly. The last time Southampton, the only time Southampton have beaten Liverpool recently was when Liverpool had Henderson in, and Fabinho in defence when they had that injury crisis, right? And Wolves are just, they just beat Wolves all the time. So that's the only saving grace I can offer to Liverpool fans. Is if you can somehow get yourself ahead of them, ahead of City in the last couple of game weeks, Liverpool will hold on. They're not, but, but before then, they have trickier games where I think they might drop some points. Um, but they're re- they're really special. They're a really really good team. And but it's just it's unfortunate for them because City are just really really good. At. <laughs> it's like it's like Fergie when he had that his, Fergie's last great team. Ferg, Sir Alex Ferguson's last great team, two thousand and nine, two thousand eight to two thousand well, two thousand seven to two thousand and eleven. He he yeah you know, that that team won three titles in a row. Made won one Champions League. It could have won three Champions Leagues, but they ran into the best team of all time. And got slapped. And so they're, they're, that team is best known for getting slapped in two Champions League finals. Which is like, that's unlucky for Fergie. But that's just, sometimes you just run into a better team. Liverpool have won one Premier League title in the last 30 years. But specifically, even when they've been this amazing team recently, they've won one Premier League title in the last four years. Why? Because Man City are better than they are. You know, let's see. I, I mean, as we spoke about recently on the Rivalries podcast, also to make this a real rivalry, Liverpool have to win the title this year. They really have to take the title off City. Can they do it? I mean... I don't think so. I think City just got, they've got that too big of an advantage. I think you've slightly almost half talked yourself out of it, but I, th- I still think you're going for not a hard yes on Manchester City, a, a medium yes. We're going to move on to the Championship playoff picture and get your views on this mode because Fulham confirmed back in the Premier League for next season. Bournemouth have got a couple of games to catch up, 77 points from 41 games. The expectation is that they will have enough. Most of the teams in the playoff block have played 43, so Bournemouth should be back in the top flight. So, Looking at the playoff picture as it stands, third place Huddersfield, fourth place Luton Town, fifth place Nottingham Forest. They look relatively set in position in terms of games that have been played. It's sixth position that's probably up for grabs. You've got Sheffield United, Millwall and Blackburn all in the running to get that. So the playoff picture in the Championship is normally so hard to predict. So I want to give you a little stat mo to work off, which is the curse of the third place. So since the start of the Premier League in 1992-93, just 12 teams have been promoted after finishing third. And it is often the case that you go hard for automatic promotion, you just miss out, and you end up hitting a form freight train of someone that's finished fifth or sixth, and they turn you over. So 41% of the teams that have come up into the Premier League from the Championship playoffs have finished third, when the expectation is they're the best team, but that does not necessarily guarantee a place. So there is hope looking at the table now that we could have Luton in the Premier League for the first time ever and Nottingham Forest back for the first time in over two decades. Well, Forest are an interesting case, right? Because right now they are fifth, but they've got two games in hand on, on Huddersfield and Luton. So if they win those two games in hand, they will be, I mean, they'll be one point off of Bournemouth right now, although Bournemouth also have those two games in hand. So they'll be 76, so they'll be third. So as much as it would be nice to see Steve Cooper's Forest back in the Premier League, uh, uh, James Garner's doing really well there front line for Man United and frankly if Man United continue their baffling decision, run decisions they'll probably be, probably send him back on loan there if, if Forrest do get promoted um, you know you, you like Forrest but then they might get into the third curse that's the cursed third place if they win those games in hand which almost is like you don't like you said you don't want to do it almost right but then also if they get their winning games in hand late in the season does that not sort of counteract the narrative of third place because They've gotten there with a late push, which is what you're talking about. But anyway, my favourite for the for the game promotion is Borough. They're not they're ninth right now, but they've got a game in hand. If they win that game in hand, they're going to go level with Sheffield United on 66 points. And Borough, as we've seen in the FA Cup this year, Chris Wilder's Borough, fantastic. They, 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 you know, they beat Spurs. They beat Mansfield as well, to be fair. Then they beat Spurs. Then they beat Man United. Or was it the other round? No, it was Man United, then Spurs. They're a great team. They can look. Chris Wilder is a great coach. We know this. We saw Sheffield United. He coaches his teams fantastically well. They play a great system. Him and Alan Neil, his assistant manager, that 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 three five two with the overlapping 
centre backs. It's just fantastic to watch. Uh, you know, Borough show have got real heart, real fire in them. Do you know what I mean? Like teams like think they're going to be easy. You know, they're going to be uh, you know, take take them apart. But then they just, I mean, they showed up again. They showed up to Old Trafford and just absolutely took United apart. You know, and they, they they were so good after that first half. You know, I, I want Borough back, man. I want and plus. If he, if he finishes, if he does get into the playoffs and does it, they're knocking Sheffield United out after they sacked him. Nice. That would be nice. I like that. You can't sack you can't sack someone as good as Chris Wilder, man. It's just that's so short-sighted of Sheffield United. And it would be fantastic if it came up to bite them with him, not only beating them to get into the playoffs, but also beating them to get back in the Premier League. That would be beautiful. I, you know, And Borough are great. It's good to have Borough back in the Premier League. They're a classic Premier League side. Bit of northeastern rivalry with Newcastle. I mean, those guys have, you know, Sunderland aren't offering anything, are they, right now? So, you know, it'd be good to have a bit of rivalry for Newcastle up there, you know, with all their money now. You know, it'd be nice to see Chris Wilder take a, take a, take some points off money bags, Newcastle next season. Uh yeah, I want I want Borough. As much as it would be great to have Forrest finally have Forrest back in the division. I mean, when was the last time they were even in the Premier League? Was it even this century? Like it was ages ago. I think it was ninety nine two thousand, but uh, that it, it'd be the longest streak out of the Premier League if they came back. Yeah, I mean it'd be great to see them back, and I mean they're Euro- two time European Cup winner. You know they're a fantastic historical side, but the narrative isn't there. But like like it is with Chris Wilder, I want to see Chris Wilder back in the Premier League. Man, he's a great great coach. He deserves more. Right, we're going to move across to the FA Cup final from the Premier League and the, and the Championship playoff picture, Alan. It's a little bit of way out the FA Cup final. It's not for another few weeks, but it is still emerging on the horizon within the context of Liverpool, this potential for one, two, three, maybe even four major trophies this season. But the double, the treble are difficult to do for a reason. They are really, really hard to get over the line. Just one team has won a double, a Premier League and FA Cup since 2010. That was Chelsea, who Liverpool are going to face in the final. Manchester City did a domestic treble in 2019. That's the first time ever. Liverpool have got a lot on their plates. They've got the Premier League, they've got the FA Cup, they've got the Champions League all to get through. And they're coming up against what is arguably Jurgen Klopp's Premier League kryptonite in Thomas Tuchel. No manager has taken more Premier League points off Klopp in the last 12 months. Five Premier League points dropped in three games. And barring the EFL Cup final when Keegan Kelleher stepped up and smashed in that brilliant penalty, they've never actually beaten Chelsea under Tuchel. So it is a bit of an issue, potentially. This is Chelsea's only opportunity for a trophy this season. What's your view on this? It's going to be a very interesting game for sure. Um, I mean, I really like Chelsea. I think they're a very strong side. I think Thomas Tuchel is one of the finest coaches in European football. Um, and I think he's built a very strong team at Chelsea in spite of the off-field issues that are kind of engulfing the club at the moment with the ownership and the uncertainty over the future of several first-team players. Um, but to be honest, in this game, and I know we're a few weeks out from it yet, I can't see beyond Liverpool. I think that they're in ominous form. They're hitting the stride at the right moment. Um, on Tuesday evening against Manchester United, the way they were playing, um, it just smacked to me of a club who believe that they're on the verge of fulfilling destiny. And I think Mo was spot on earlier in what he said about the way they've dealt with you know, City over the past three or four years. And unless they win another title, it's going to look like in history that it was kind of a a red blip in a blue ocean, if that makes sense, that Liverpool's title was a one-off and City are the dominant team of the era, whereas if they can win a quadruple this year, then they would have done something no other English club have ever done and have bettered the record set by United in 1999. And I think that they can smell that history. Um, the way Thiago Alcantara played and Tuesday United against United, it was just absolutely breathtaking. The way he spoke in his post-match interview with Mohamed Salah, I don't know if you saw it, but... They were talking playing everything on Sunday, um, and then Salah goes, "Wait till you see Sunday. It's going to even be even better." And it just kind of smacked to me of just a guy and a team who are just out for blood, you know. Like they don't want to just beat everything on Sunday. Just they didn't want to just beat um, United on Tuesday. They want to go and humiliate them, and that's just a very unique moment. I and mean, we don't know what Mo Salah is going to do in the summer. Um, Klopp's future is, you know, surely going to be called into question um, when his contract expires in the summer of twenty twenty. Four, I believe it is. So, you know, who knows how long Mishlango will have of this Liverpool team. And I think that the way they're playing at the moment and um, the, the momentum they have behind them, um, I wouldn't back against them in any single game they play. And while you would favour City's running over Liverpool's running um, and City have the advantage, I think they're going to pip them there as well. So I think that in football, there's no stronger force than momentum. I think Liverpool have the momentum. 
Um, they're fighting on all fronts. I think they'll beat Villarreal in the Champions League. They've already won the League Cup. I can see them winning the Premier League and I can't see the passing for the FA Cup either. No matter how strong Chelsea are and the fact that Tuchel does seem to have the Indian sign of her clock in many ways, I just can't see beyond Liverpool. As much as it pains for me to say as an Everton fan. So quickly before we wrap up, you're going for three trophies for Liverpool or do you think they'll get all four? Do you think they'll do the Champions I'll League? I'll go, I'll go four. Four. Yeah, I reckon I reckon three. I reckon they'll do an anti-sports washing cup treble. They've already beaten Chelsea once in the FA Cup final. They'll beat them again in the, in the League Cup. They'll beat them in the, in the League Cup final. Then they'll beat uh, Man City in the Champions League final. I think they're going to do anti. They'll do a cup treble. I think City will pit them in the league. I do think I do think they'll win this, win this. Look, just a quick thing. Uh, Chelsea, as much as you yeah, you're right. Chelsea have the the sign. Klopp has the the sign of a clock. Sorry, Tuchel has the sign of a clock. Uh, they played Liverpool without with Kevin Kelleher in goal in the League Cup final and couldn't score, right? Past them or couldn't beat them, right? Now they're playing Allison. Allison's right, non penalty expected goals conceded in the Premier League is 30.55, right? Yet his non penalty expected goals on target conceded, which means the shots he's on target he actually faces, is 20.87. That's a differential of 9.7. That's the highest in the top six of any top six player. That means, you know, so teams are getting chances to score him, but they're shooting wide. He's such an intimidating presence that, like, they're like, ah, what do we do? And then they're just skewing wide. They're not getting shots on target on him comparatively. And when they do get shots on target, obviously, he's saving a lot of them. Uh, you know, you're going up a goalkeeper, you know, they couldn't deal with Kelleher, who is, you know, a tall guy, good goalkeeper. Now they're going up against the guy that's so bloody handsome. Opponents are just, are just afraid, to, like, just, oh, my God, Addison. They're looking to his baby blues and just fall in love and then forget to actually shoot on target. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the, the only goalkeeper, goalkeepers with the higher um, XG differential like that are uh, Ben Foster, Kasper Schmeichel, Jose Saar and Nick Pope. All of them playing defensive sides or in Kasper Schmeichel's side, a team that ends up being defensive because they're so rubbish this season. Sorry, Leicester fans. It's kind of true. Um, you know, Pope's differential is 15.5, for instance, right? But Addison's is the highest in top six. He's a sensational goalkeeper. And I, you know what, as well, I would, I think he's going to be the difference. He's prevented 1.9 non-penalty goals this season. Only Jose Sarr, who's having a ridiculous miracle season that will never be able to repeat, is going has more this season. Alisson is a huge, decisive force in the goal for Liverpool. And I think just the fact that he's in goal now is going to win, win Liverpool this cup final. I think... You know, I, I I think Chelsea will actually play very well, like they think it's Real Madrid. I think they'll 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 really set up brilliantly. Mason Mount said he wants revenge. Ruben Loftus-Cheek said he wants revenge. They're going to be really focused. They're going to play really well. They might even play better than Chelsea, frankly. But they won't get past Allison, and I think that will be the decisive factor in the in the final. We are going to move on and, and uh, call it a day on the FA Cup Championship playoff and Premier League title race. I'm not sure if you can get odds on the bluest eyes in the Premier League, but Mo, we're going to give you a second to go and research that because Alisson is probably odds-on favourite to win that. Mm-hmm. 